Welcome to Headline Focus, here live on Core Politics with me, Rob Double. Slightly later than usual, simply because there is just so much happening this week uh, in terms of what's going on in Brexit. And so let's crack on with our first story. It is a huge week for Theresa May. Uh, the next coming five days could be massively important, not just for her own political career, but also what's going to be happening in terms of the Brexit outcome uh, of the negotiations between the UK and the EU. Now, why? Well, over the weekend, it was uh, reports are that a huge amount of technical progress was made between negotiators uh, in terms of what's going to happen uh, with regards to specifically the withdrawal agreement. Uh, and the withdrawal agreement in, in the terms of the whole Brexit negotiations is the terms of leaving and the actual legally binding document uh, which the UK and the EU will subscribe to and totally uh, implement uh, once it's gonna, been agreed. It will in, you know, basically the terms of the divorce, uh, things like the divorce bill, implications on citizens of both countries living within each other's uh, territories. And crucially, the backstop plans as well, in particular the black, uh, backstop plans to the Irish border. So what happened over the weekend? Technical arrangements were made. Some kind of agreement was made in terms of a, a withdrawal, uh, withdrawal agreement. Uh, that was then taken to the Prime Minister and to Dominic Raab, the Brexit Secretary. And both of them, but in particular the Prime Minister, refused to sign off on it. In fact, Dominic Raab travelled to Brussels yesterday only to meet Michel Barnier for just over an hour reportedly. Uh, and uh, basically uh, it ending uh, with no agreement and no uh, agreement in terms of what had been discussed uh, in terms of the technical talks during uh, the weekend. Um, a quote from Barnier here, uh, Michel Barnier, who's of course the EU's chief negotiator, saying, despite intense efforts, some key issues are still open. Now, why is this so difficult to achieve? Why, despite the technical progress that happened, it's still not being able to get through the line on a political level if it's gone through the technical level? And that's simply to do with this, uh, seems to be this idea of the backstop on the Irish border. That seems to be the key problem which is causing all this political uh, difficulty for Theresa May and uh, meaning that she's unable to agree uh, and finally seal up a deal in terms of the withdrawal agreement. Now, let's just break this down. In terms of uh, what the EU are proposing, the EU's backstop, which they say uh, the UK committed to in December last year when they signed off the idea of the backstop, uh, and the UK to some extent did, but there is some caveats around that, is basically that the Northern Ireland, in the event of no, being no agreement, will be in order to prevent a hard border, it will be treated separately to the UK mainland and will basically ensure that it stays part of the customs union uh, of the European Union aligned in terms of regulations as well, which means that goods and services can, people can travel freely between the two countries in terms of the Republic of Ireland uh, and Northern Ireland. Now, Theresa May said that's no go and proposed the Chequers plan, which is about having a uh, customs uh, arrangement, uh, basically a common rule book in terms of goods, uh, but not services. And that will mean that there isn't a difference between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK mainland, mainland uh, rest of the UK mainland. It'll in fact be the same arrangement uh, for the whole of the UK mainland. This is, there's been no agreement so far in terms of the reports uh, coming through at all. The DUP, obviously uh, very, very politically influential uh, on the Prime Minister and the government, has said there can be no border in the Irish Sea. By that I mean Northern Ireland cannot be treated any differently from the rest of the UK uh, in terms of a Brexit deal. Uh, if that doesn't happen, the DUP have said they will withdraw support for Theresa May's Brexit plan, and then it's a high possibility, or at least a high risk, that the plan won't get through Parliament with implications of a Brexit deal not happening, no deal Brexit, or even the Prime Minister being kicked out of Downing Street as well. Those in the Conservative Party, in the Prime Minister's own party, are also saying uh, that there cannot be, uh, obviously, a uh, the backstop deal isn't uh, something which the Prime Minister can agree, agree to, but particularly because uh, in a new agreement which has been put forward, which is that the whole of the uh, UK stays within the customs union for a backstop plan, not just Northern Ireland, the whole of the UK, uh, there needs to be a time limit on that and a specific date by which that backstop ends, so to ensure that the UK does not stay tied to the customs union uh, through the back door. And now that is something which is being particularly problematic because the EU are saying there should not be, there cannot be, in terms of a backstop insurance policy, an end date for it. It is simply an insurance policy and that's it. The Conservative Party, a lot of Conservative hardliners are saying, no, there has to be an end date. Uh, and that is an intractable position as well, Theresa May is trying to deal with at the moment uh, as well. In terms of where this is going, the EU summit of political leaders, so all EU27 uh, are going to be meeting on Wednesday discussing the Brexit. There was a hope that the withdrawal agreement will be agreed and ticked off and signed off uh, by the EU, EU leaders, and that will be complete by Wednesday. It looks like, certainly reports indicate, it's not going to happen, or at least it's going to be very difficult getting there uh, in terms of 
everything being finalised for that time. Question over whether Theresa May will go and give a speech uh, and what she's going to be doing as well. But certainly this also puts question marks on what was going to happen to this Brexit summit in November as well. President Macron uh, previously saying that unless there's been really any decent progress made on the Brexit negotiations, the November Brexit summit where everything was due to be signed off, that's totally from A to B, a comprehensive agreement in terms of, in terms of Brexit was due to be agreed. That won't even happen at all. Uh, so there really is everything up in the air this week and why while we might have heard it many times before, this is the week for Brexit in terms of things becoming clear and decisions having to be made and an agreement having to be made, particularly uh, on the withdrawal terms as well. Let's just have a look more domestically then, just to add more devil to the detail of what's going on with Theresa May in her own party. Now, I mentioned uh, what Theresa May is proposing now in terms of a backstop plan uh, to uh, the insurance policy in case there's no agreement. She's proposing, right, OK, the EU have said the Northern Ireland will stay part of the customs union. Forget that. The whole of the UK will stay part of the customs union. Uh, and we will go on that basis until a future arrangement is made and there's a resolution to the Irish border which suits everyone. Now, the Conservative Party, many of her Conservative Party, as I said, say that has to be time limited. There has to be a date by which that is agreed the customs union will end, the UK will leave the customs union, uh, and that is it. That's final, the UK has left. EU has said that can't happen. The insurance policy has to be just in perpetuity uh, until there is a point where the Northern Ireland border uh, issue is resolved. The extent of this infighting is coming clear. David Davis, former Brexit secretary, has launched a call to arms or launched a call to arms over the weekend for cabinet ministers, basically saying to exert collective authority to reject Theresa May's checkers plan, going and saying the UK must reset our negotiating strategy immediately. Just to give you a sense of the severity of it and the extent of the lobbying going on in Conservative backbenches towards cabinet ministers. Boris Johnson, as you can see as well in his piece in The Telegraph, saying Brexit talks are now entering the moment of crisis. Neither the backstop option is acceptable to the UK. Um, it is a choice between two exquisitely embarrassing varieties of humiliation, he gets, says in his article, and is an entirely false choice. It must be rejected and it must be rejected now. So really two huge players uh, in both former Foreign Secretary, former Brexit Secretary, really laying into the Brexit plan and indeed Prime Minister, the Prime Minister's personal authority in terms of Brexit as well. Uh, what's going to happen here? The Sunday Times are reporting that more letters of no confidence are now uh, in the, have been handed in uh, to the 1922 committee. As some MPs are claiming four letters were submitted last week, uh, according to the report in the Sunday Times, on top of three being submitted during the week of the party conference. One MP, according to the Sunday Times, saying that there are now there are between 42 and 44 letters of resign resignation. Uh, sorry, voting of no letters of no confidence to Theresa May. Why is that important? That's only four letters short of what's needed to trigger a vote of no confidence in Theresa May as Prime Minister, which is crucial. A really interesting article there from the Sunday Times. The key problem here is over the next week, next few days, depending on what's going to happen in terms of this backstop and this withdrawal agreement and over the time limited nature of it, whether Theresa May is going to force that through or concede that there's going to be no time limit to it, could mean that cabinet, we can see some more cabinet walkouts, particularly from Brexit supporting members of the cabinet who've stayed in uh, for the time being. But this might be the line uh, which they cannot cross and cannot support. So again, Heads up on what's going on in the Conservative Party in terms of the internal dynamics to with Brexit. Uh, one to keep an eye on. Finally, one more story comes from uh, what's going on in terms of the devolved administrations and in particular the rest of the union, uh, even uh, more so complicated or as complicated as what's going on in Northern Ireland as well. Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister of Scotland, has made a speech this morning uh, calling for a common sense alternative to the UK government's Brexit plans, uh, saying in a new paper, putting the case effectively for continued membership of the single market and customs union uh, with the EU, in particular for Scotland. She gave a speech in London uh, a little bit earlier this morning, warning MPs, uh, MPs should not be railroaded basically into it accepting a bad deal um, because there's nothing else on the table and to vote it down would mean a no deal Brexit scenario, which would, uh, in many reports say, would be very, very difficult for the UK. Um, the UK have responded already by saying that, uh, you know, they put forward a precise and credible plan for the UK's future relationship with the EU. Interestingly, though, what's going on here in Scotland is similar to what's going on in Northern Ireland, something which hasn't come through the Brexit narrative in terms of the reports too much is what the Scottish Conservative leader and Scottish Secretary have said, uh, obviously Ruth Davison and David Mundell, saying they could resign, according to the BBC, could resign from their roles over a possible Brexit compromise which would see Northern Ireland treated differently to the rest of the UK and the component parts of the UK. Uh, in a letter to the Prime Minister, according to the BBC, they say, uh, by that I mean Ruth Davison and David Mundell, saying they would not support any deal, Brexit deal, that introduces different arrangements for Northern Ireland, aka different arrangements 
arrangements to different parts of the union, as that would be uh, very difficult in terms of maintaining that the union is a party of equals and ensuring there isn't any complexity or difficulty uh, in Scotland where they say, hang on a minute, Northern Ireland's been given different terms in terms of Brexit. Why can't we have something similar? Um, so, is, so that's good for us. That's really important because uh, David Davidson is such an important figure for the Conservative parties you know, tipped or once tipped as a uh, conservative, future con conservative party leader before she ruled herself out uh, earlier on a few weeks ago. Uh, but also she's so electorally important for the Conservatives, so successful in the last election in Scotland, winning seats for the Conservatives as a whole, which meant Theresa May could stay back in Downing Street. So seeing David Davison resign over any Brexit compromise would be a huge blow, I think, for the Conservative Party uh, in terms of the months and indeed the years ahead. That's pretty much it for today. You're up to date. Don't forget to find all the latest on what we're doing here on Core Politics on our Facebook page and Twitter right here. We're barely able to scratch the surface of the amount of things going on this week in terms of Brexit in particular, but also what's going on in Westminster. So if you've got any more comments or points you want to raise, put them in the comments section below or tweet me. Uh, I'm at, at RJH Double uh, on Twitter. We'll see you again. On Wednesday, we're going to be in Brussels seeing what's going on from the European perspective. So we'll be bringing you more inside Europe then. So nothing going on on Wednesday, but I'll see you back again here uh, for Headline Focus on Thursday morning.